Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Mr. Miller here on a Wednesday, Wednesday the 27th of May. Uh, so Wednesday, uh, we are almost at the end of May, which is exciting. Uh, just a quick word of note, uh, if anybody is interested, there is a live event tonight at 9. Uh, Mr. Vossler and I will be learning how to make a craft, so that should be interesting. Uh, and there's a special guest coming uh, a crafting expert that will be uh, here with us. So if you're interested, tune in 9 o'clock uh, tonight on my YouTube channel uh, under a live broadcast. So uh, that is the information there. Uh, so we have today uh, topic 19 through 20 notes. We are going to go on and uh, continue on with uh, our notes where we had left off yesterday. We had finished up Ronald Reagan, and now we got to get into kind of what life is like after Reagan is done being president. So that would be uh, George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton, who we will talk about today, both of them. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So uh, to start with here, George H.W. Bush, uh, the H.W. stands for Herbert Walker, in case you wanted to know, Herbert Walker. Uh, George H.W. Bush is Ronald Reagan's vice president, and so uh, Bush kind of has the inside track to become the next president after Reagan is done in 1988, 1989. So Bush, uh, Bush kind of benefits from Reagan's popularity, and Bush uh, basically gets to stroll into a stroll into a president or into the presidency because he was Reagan's vice president. Uh, he had a promise that he said, uh, everybody was questioning, oh, oh, George H.W. Bush, are you going to raise taxes during your time in pre or in your, in your time as president? And as you might know, tax increases are not a popular thing in America. Uh, so George H.W. Bush basically promises not to raise taxes. He says, uh, and this is a quote, he says, read my lips, no new taxes. Uh, so that uh, is his promise. Later comes back to vitamin butt, and we will talk about that in a few minutes. Now, he faces off against a guy named uh, Michael Dukakis, who is pictured over here on the uh, right-hand side of the screen. Uh, Michael Dukakis, he is a governor, I believe, from Massachusetts. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's Massachusetts. Uh, so he is... Uh, yeah, well-known guy, kind of. He's a Democrat, but he ends up making a big mistake, and this is kind of like a, a famous blunder in terms of uh, political political people and what they remember. So Michael Dukakis, he goes and visits a, 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 an army base uh, to go and check things out because that's what presidential nominees do, apparently. Uh, and they say, oh, somebody had the bright idea. Oh, let's get him in a tank and... Uh, let's like show him in a tank and then he'll be driving around and it'll be really cool and really patriotic. So they videotaped it and then it aired on TV and it turns out that it was kind of the opposite of that. It was kind of just a funny video, a funny humorous thing. Uh, it was, it was kind of uh, showing that Michael Dukakis was kind of a goofball and wasn't really that serious of a guy. Uh, here he is riding in the tank, and he's got that helmet strapped on there, and he's just grinning ear to ear and uh, pointing at the camera, and he, he just looks not like a guy who's going to be riding around in a tank for any extended period of time. So while it was meant to show his patriotism and his, his military-minded uh, military person or persona, I guess, uh, it very much just showed that he was not the right guy for the country. And and this is just an example. Uh, images and videos, they change people's opinions on things pretty easily. Uh, much more than something was in, uh, like in a newspaper, in print, like in words. Like if there was a newspaper article talking about how Michael Dukakis rode in a tank, everybody would be like, oh, great, who cares? Uh, oh, that's awesome, maybe. Uh, but since there's a video, and the video shows that he's kind of goofy and not really able to be taken serious, uh, seriously, uh, then that gives a different message than the black and white news article. Uh, so that's kind of what candidates are facing here, and they're facing it still to this day, uh, facing it uh, very much so. 
Now, George H.W. Bush is well known specifically for uh, one thing, and that would be a uh, military uh, military exploits that happened during his time in office uh, called uh, the Persian Gulf War, the Persian Gulf War. Uh, the Persian Gulf uh, was down in the Middle East. It butts up against uh, Iran, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, and Iraq. Uh, and so two of those countries are involved in this Persian Gulf War. Basically, there was a leader, and this guy pictured here is the leader of Iraq. Uh, and Iraq is pictured here on this map. Uh, and this guy pictured here, his name is, and he's a very famous guy, infamous guy, I would say. His name is Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. So Saddam Hussein, he is the leader of Iraq at this point, and up until uh, 2003, 4, 5 ish, um, we'll talk about him uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll talk about him tomorrow, uh, some more. But Saddam Hussein, he's the leader of Iraq, and he's kind of a questionable character. He had at one point uh, gassed a group of. Uh, a group of individuals in one of his towns uh, because he didn't they were a different ethnic group uh, so he is a very radical guy and we're not a huge fan of Saddam Hussein Saddam Hussein decides in 1990 1989 1990 that he would invade a little tiny neighboring country called Kuwait and Kuwait is down there in the bottom corner of this map okay Kuwait so he invades Kuwait uh, I have it also on my uh, thing there if you need to spell it better. Maybe you can't see it further down there. So Kuwait uh, gets invaded. Kuwait happens to be one of the most oil-rich countries in the world. Iraq had oil, but Kuwait had, uh, it would have given uh, Saddam Hussein 20% of the world's oil supply. It would have given him control of 20% of the world's oil supply. So obviously that's a big red flag in America. Uh, and so we say, oh, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. That's not good. We have to come to Kuwait's rescue and kick Saddam Hussein out of there. Otherwise he's gonna monopolize all of our oil and we're not, uh, not going to have any oil to go around. So what we do is we get the United Nations together and we launch an, an, an attack on Saddam Hussein's forces in Kuwait and in Iraq. Uh, and we get it to be called uh, the Persian Gulf War. Uh, there's a specific operation in this that I have up here uh, called Operation Desert Storm, uh, which is another, another famous uh, name for part of the Persian Gulf War. So Operation Desert Storm, there was an aerial attack. Uh, let me go to a map here. Uh, there was an aerial attack uh, using airplanes attacking major trade routes going to Iraq. Uh, or going from Iraq, uh, basically there was this highway that gets nicknamed, uh, nicknamed the Highway of Death, I believe it was called. Uh, and this is pictured over here on the uh, right side of the screen uh, because you end up with uh, just airplanes, American airplanes and UN airplanes just zooming over top of this highway and shooting anything that's on it constantly. And so that's what's left over after all of this, uh, all those wrecked vehicles that are there. Um, so it is also an invasion, okay? An invasion happens. This invasion lasts only 100 hours, okay? So think about that for a second. That is less than, that's like four days and a few hours, okay? Four days and a few hours, four days and four hours uh, is less than 100 hours. So figure for the better part of four days, we are fighting this war uh, and we are basically done after four days. Uh, we invade uh, Kuwait and Iraq uh, and push uh, push Saddam Hussein back into Iraq. Uh, four, day, four days it lasts until the Iraqis surrender and leave Kuwait. And uh, we had 500,000 soldiers in the United States that we committed to this exercise. And there was only 148 American deaths. Okay, so this was a very, very successful uh, successful miss it, mission by uh, the United States here uh, and the United Nations as well. But the United States were the main leaders in this Operation Desert Storm and the Persian Gulf War. So it's a big success, big victory. Uh, this picture here, before I move on from it, this picture here on the on the left 
is a picture of these oil wells. Uh, the United States and other places, in order to convince the Iraqis to leave the oil wells, they lit them on fire, uh, and so oil burns. So it's just kind of this this geyser of fire that happens. Uh, they would have been able to put that put out the fires eventually once the Iraqis left. Uh, so not all the oil got got taken away and destroyed. Okay, so on to number eight. Okay, George H. W. Bush really successful as that military expertise goes. Okay, as far as the Persian Gulf War went. However, uh, George H. W. Bush happens to get himself into some hot water because uh, he actually had to raise taxes in the middle of his presidency. Remember, he said, read my lips, no new taxes. He has to raise taxes, and that turns out to be pretty unpopular after you promise not to do that. So keep that in mind. If you ever promise not to do something and then turn around and do it, people are going to be upset with you. Okay, that's a bit of a life lesson for you in case you didn't already know that. Uh, anyways, uh, George H.W. Bush gets uh, kind of uh, negative uh, negative feedback on those tax breaks, or on those tax raises. Um, he also is facing off against another guy who is taking votes away from him, a third party candidate. Uh, his name is Ross Perot. You don't need to know that uh, too much. Ross Perot uh, takes a lot of votes away from George H.W. Bush and allows... Uh, a Democrat to win uh, for the first time since Jimmy Carter, since the 1970s. Uh, and that Democrat, his name is Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Uh, so Bill Clinton here, uh, he is obviously, like I said, elected in part because there was a split election, but he proves to be relatively popular in his own in his own right. Clinton involves the United States into a few different, a uh, few different foreign issues, foreign policy things, not as big as the Persian Gulf War, but some things he gets a, he gets us involved in. Uh, those things would be uh, pictured, uh, one of them's pictured here on this map of, I'm sorry for the yawn, that's number one. Uh, on this map of Eastern Europe, uh, there is a country called Bosnia. Bosnia and Herzegovina is right there. Uh, so Bosnia happens to be a, uh, there's a genocide that's happening where they're just mass killing a lot of people. Uh, you know what a genocide is. Uh, just a mass killing of people based on a certain trait. Religion, ethnic group, whatever it may be. Uh, so genocide uh, happens in Bosnia in the 1990s. And so Clinton kind of gets involved. Uh, with that and tries to organize an end to that genocide. Uh, there is also another genocide that happens uh, that you guys are probably very familiar with given global history. Uh, it happens in uh, Africa, uh, in Rwanda. So the Rwandan genocide, remember the Hutus and the Tutsis, maybe that, rem maybe that rings a bell, hopefully it does. Uh, the Hutus killed uh, 800,000 plus Tutsis uh, two different ethnic groups in Rwanda, and Clinton doesn't really get involved with this one. Okay, he gets involved in Bosnia, but not in Rwanda, which is interesting. So he gets criticized for that in some uh, in some cases. Now, also there were a uh, or there was a rise of terrorism in the 1990s that then spills over into the 2000s that we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, but this rise in terrorism is centered around uh, one group in particular. Uh, that one group is uh, called Al-Qaeda. Al -Qaeda. Uh, it's spelled a little strange, but it is a, uh, I don't know, ethnic group came from that word, but or what ethnic group has that word? It's an Arabic word, uh, I guess it would be. So Al-Qaeda, and the leader of Al-Qaeda, his name is Osama bin Laden, who you have heard of before, and you have heard of both of these things, I'm assuming, Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. So Osama bin Laden is pictured over here on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, there is a terrorist attack that Osama bin Laden carries out uh, by, uh, by the under the, I guess, under the heading of Al-Qaeda, uh, carries out this, this attack. Uh, basically what they did was they had a, this is going to sound really familiar, they had a major building that they targeted in America uh, called the World Trade Center down in New York City, okay, uh, 
this should sound really familiar, but it's not what you're thinking it is. Uh, so in 1993, they had the World Trade Center, and they basically went down into the basement, into the parking garage underneath the World Trade Center. And what they decided to do was uh, have truck bombs. Okay, so they had a truck bomb under the World Trade Center and basically just detonated it in 1993. Uh, and so Al-Qaeda ends up... Uh, in, I mean, this ends up injuring a thousand people. Uh, you can see the damage here in this picture uh, where these uh, concrete rings and rebar would have been around these, around these pillars would have been where uh, a deck was of uh, cars. Uh, so cars would have been able to park on those levels and there is completely nothing there. Okay, so that part is kind of interesting uh, and just shows the destruction that was there. Uh, a thousand people get injured, six people die, uh, and it is a kind of a move that puts Al-Qaeda on the map as a uh, terrorist group that we need to be very, very careful about. Uh, this did not collapse the buildings. It was just down in the parking garage, and the steel beams were still okay down there. Uh, so the building was structurally fine, but the parking garage was the target of this, uh, of this attack. So... Uh, Later on, eight years later, in 2001, uh, Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda end up attacking the same building again, uh, this time by crashing airplanes into it, and that is the 9-11, September 11th, uh, September 11th um, terrorist attacks. So we'll talk about those tomorrow. Uh, that'll be kind of our uh, one of our main focuses uh, towards the end of our class tomorrow. But uh, this was the same place, which is interesting, I think. Uh, at the very least. So uh, that part is uh, strange. Now, number nine, okay, let's get into, uh, yeah, let's get into uh, some interesting things that happened with Bill Clinton here at home. Okay, so domestic policy. I'm sorry for the yawn, that's number two, I apologize. Um, so domestic policy, things that are happening here in America or things that Clinton does here in America. Uh, Bill Clinton is responsible for passing a law called the Family Medical Leave Act, the FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act. Uh, basically what this gives is it gives the opportunity for individuals to take medical leave if they have a family member who needs help or if they just have had a kid who was born. Uh, they give them the opportunity to take unpaid leave and you get to keep your job. Uh, beforehand, you would have employers who would not let people take time off. They would have to basically quit their job to take time off to go be with uh, their uh, wife who just had a kid or uh, be with an adult or with a, a parent who is really ill. Uh, so you would have to take that time off unpaid or quit. Uh, you would basically have to quit your job. So this Family Medical Leave Act, it, it allows for uh, a bit more generosity in terms of uh, people and their medical needs and their family needs, taking care of your family. So this has been expanded over time. This Family Medical Leave Act has been expanded over time. Now, uh, Clinton also tried to advocate for universal health care, meaning, uh, meaning everybody in America would have it. Uh, this was a big policy that his wife put in place. His wife, you may know, her name is Hillary Clinton, who ran for president against uh, Donald Trump in, in 2016. So Hillary Clinton, the first lady at this point, the, uh, the wife of Bill Clinton, is championing health care uh, and trying to get uh, universal health care for all Americans. But that is not, uh, not going to happen at this point. Uh, it later happens under Barack Obama. Now, there is also some domestic terrorist things, uh, events that happen in America that are uh, very, very deadly uh, and very scary. Uh, there was one event that happened, uh, and it is pictured in this image here, uh, this picture. Uh, this is what they call the Oklahoma City bombing. Uh, basically, there was a gentleman, his name was Timothy McVeigh. You don't need to know his name or I, you don't need to write his name down, but at least you'll hear his name. So Timothy McVeigh, he is upset over the government's handling of a few different crises that we're not going to talk about. Uh, one of them being the Waco siege, which look it up. It's kind of interesting. Um, so the uh, 
this guy, Timothy McVeigh, ends up deciding to bomb, in 1995, bomb an office building in Oklahoma City, a federal office building. So these are American workers, uh, federal workers, government workers. Uh, he bombs this building. Uh, the building has a lot of people working in it. Uh, they figure that about 150 people, over 150 people died in this bombing. Uh, it basically peeled the whole side off of this building and almost went entirely through the building. So this was just massively, massively deadly uh, and just a very, very sad, sad event in 1995. Now, uh, four years after that, there is also an event that is, uh, that is also very noteworthy, specifically for us. Uh, if we were sitting in school right now, we have a lot of things that we do in school because of this event that happened in 1999. And this event is the Columbine, uh, the Columbine massacre, or the Columbine school shooting. So I've got Columbine written there. Uh, Columbine was the not the first school shooting to my knowledge, but it was the one that kind of made school shootings a bit more of a conversation in America, uh, a bit more of a protection sort of thing. We have to protect against school shootings. Uh, Columbine was definitely not the deadliest school shooting in American history, but it was uh, a very shocking one. Uh, there were 13 people who died in this Columbine massacre out in Colorado. It was uh, Columbine, Colorado, which is just south of Denver. Uh, so this Columbine massacre had uh, 13 people died, but it, it shocked us. We didn't think that schools were a, a place that this could happen. Uh, schools were much opener at the time. People could go, people could leave, people could leave during study halls, people could go get lunch during school hours, those sorts of things. Uh, nowadays, you might know that our school is very, very different in terms of uh, having things locked down very tightly. And that is a safety thing because school shootings have gone from this Columbine thing, which was just, wow, this was a horrible thing. This was one instance, but it has gone to now there's a lot of them going on. Uh, and now we need to kind of be a little bit more careful with lockdown drills and locking doors and uh, all sorts of protocol in that in that area, which is a sad thing, but uh, we need to protect people's lives. And uh, oftentimes that, that is at school that needs to have those protections. So uh, a lot of the protections that we have today are due to uh, the instances at Columbine and other places like Sandy Hook. Uh, different uh, different places, uh, school shootings. Now, uh, let's get into the last topic of the day, which is Bill Clinton's impeachment. Okay, Bill Clinton uh, happens to go under investigation in the early 1990s over some real estate investments that he was having as governor of Arkansas. So when he was governor of Arkansas, he was responsible for investing some uh, investing some money in real estate, and uh, that real estate happened to uh, happened to um, raise some red flags. Okay, so what ends up happening is uh, there's a guy who investigates Bill Clinton and uh, Hillary Clinton and their real estate investments. So the problem arises with Bill Clinton when they start digging around in his finances a little bit, and then they find out that there is uh, some news about a marital affair that happens. Okay, so uh, this happens with a uh, with a lady, and her name she's a famous lady. Her name is Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky. Um, Monica Lewinsky was an aide for Bill Clinton when he was uh, at the White House. So as president, he, she is uh, basically an aide, somebody who helps him, somebody who advises him, whatever. Uh, she's much younger than him. Uh, she is uh, just very, very much uh, an aide. So basically there was this rumor of this affair that happened between the two of them. And this gets published in, uh, in this report about uh, Bill Clinton's finances. And so uh, Bill Clinton goes in front of Congress and Congress asks him questions. And when you're in front of Congress, you have to promise to tell the truth and you cannot lie. Uh, and if you lie, that is uh, what they call uh, a, a crime. It's a very high crime. It's what they call perjury. Uh, perjury means uh, lying under oath. So if you lie under oath, you've committed perjury. That is not good. You cannot do that. Uh, perjury is uh, 
very close to treason. Uh, perjury is, I mean, it's not the same thing as treason, but you're lying to the government, basically, under oath, saying that you're going to promise to tell the truth, and then you don't. So Bill Clinton is asked about uh, this uh, potential affair. Okay. Congress says, Hey, did you, did you have an affair with Monica Lewinsky? And he says the famous quote, and Mr. Shamel can do a very good impression of this. So I've heard, uh, he basically says, I didn't have uh, sexual relations with that woman. Okay. And that's what he says. So, uh, case closed, right? Okay. He said, no, I didn't, I didn't do anything and I was under oath. So I must be telling the truth. However, uh, it comes to light that uh, they did, in fact, have uh, a relationship and uh, it was, you know, they had an affair and it did turn into a physical thing. So that was proven by Monica Lewinsky based on evidence that she had. So basically, at this point, uh, Bill Clinton has committed a very bad crime and that crime would be perjury. OK, he has committed perjury. So perjury, again, lying under oath. Uh, he also was uh, accused of another crime called obstruction of justice. So obstruction of justice just means uh, just means that uh, you're getting in the way of the government for uh, giving out justice or uh, solving crimes and things like that. So uh, Bill Clinton says, oh, yeah, you're right. I guess I did have an affair with her. Uh, I guess I did. So everything's fine, right? Uh, the problem is, at this point, uh, he has committed a crime, and the crime, you can't do that as a president. So what the House of Representatives does, they vote to, for the second time in American history, they vote to impeach the president. The first time uh, was back in 1867 with Andrew Johnson. Uh, remember, he was uh, firing all of these uh, all of these. Uh, cabinet members, all these radical Republicans in his cabinet uh, that Lincoln had uh, right after the Civil War. And so Congress impeaches him because they don't like him and they don't like how he's running things and they think that he's abusing his power. In this case, Congress impeaches Bill Clinton and says, uh, you lied under oath, you can't do that. Okay. And you obstructed our ability to give justice and you can't do that. So what ends up happening here? Uh, he gets impeached, but remember, impeachment is a two-step process. We talked about this at length in December when we were talking about Donald Trump's impeachment, remember, uh, which was only the third time in American history. So uh, impeachment's a two-step process. You have to be impeached, and then there is another step of being removed from office. So being impeached does not mean that you're done being president. You have to be impeached by the House of Representatives and then removed from office by the Senate. And in each, uh, in, uh, I forget about the House of Representatives, but in the Senate, you need two thirds of a vote to remove somebody from office. Two thirds of all senators need to say, yep, we want to get you out of office because we think your crime has been so bad. Uh, so we need to get you out of office. Now, uh, most Americans, it's worth noting, most Americans at this point do not agree with uh, Bill Clinton's actions. They think he uh, didn't do the right thing. He uh, committed an affair and he, uh, you know, uh, lied about it, which is not okay. You can't lie about things to Congress. So most Americans thought that he was in the wrong, but most Americans also didn't want him removed. They said, yeah, but it was just an affair. Okay. It's not like he totally destroyed the country or was lying about things uh, in terms of his dealings with uh, other countries or things like that. Uh, he just had an affair, which is not a, it's kind of more of a moral issue than a political issue or a legal issue. Uh, there's no, uh, I mean, there's, I don't think there's really any laws saying that you can't have an affair. Uh, you shouldn't have an affair, okay? You just shouldn't because that's a moral issue. Uh, it's a moral thing. But if you're married to somebody, you're married to somebody. Uh, if you don't want to be married to them anymore, there's a thing called divorce, okay? Not saying that you should do that, but there's ways to get out of marriage rather than having an affair. Uh, but I would say that this is more of a moral issue than a political issue. Uh, now, a lot of the senators agreed on this. Uh, there were a majority of Republicans in the Senate 
uh, at one point in this trial, but then there was an election that took place in 1998 that then put a lot more Democrats in power. Uh, and so they need two thirds of the votes to remove him from office. Uh, most Republicans voted to remove him from office and voted him guilty. Uh, but uh, all of the Democrats, I believe all of them, as well as a handful of Republicans voted to acquit him or say that he was not guilty. So you end up with a 50-50 split in terms of the Senate. Uh, so there's 100 senators, 50 of them voted that he was guilty, 50 of them voted that he was not guilty. However, that is not enough to remove him from office because he, they needed 67 votes to get him from office. So uh, Bill Clinton, yes, he was impeached. No, he was not remo removed from office. Uh, fun fact, in American history, we have never had a president who was removed from office. Uh, we had a president who resigned in Richard Nixon, as we talked about a couple of years ago, not a couple of years ago, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so Richard Nixon resigned and he probably would have gotten impeached or no, he would have gotten impeached and he probably would have gotten removed from office. Uh, so he would have been the one. And so he resigned before he knew it. He saw the writing on the wall to use that phrase that we used yesterday. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Bill Clinton impeached, not removed. Andrew Johnson impeached, not removed. Donald Trump impeached, not removed, if you remember from what happened just a couple months ago. So uh, yeah, that's the deal for Bill Clinton. So I'm going to leave off there. We'll get into George W. Bush uh, tomorrow, who happens to be George H.W. Bush's son. Uh, but we'll get into the war on terror and 9-11 and all that stuff. Uh, but the 2000 election with uh, George H or with George W. Bush winning his election is a very, very interesting election. And we'll talk about that first thing tomorrow. So there's a couple questions to answer. Again, I ran way over time. I'm sorry. I just get so fired up about this stuff and it's so interesting to talk about. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, hopefully you'll forgive me. Um, I hope so. So, uh, yeah, we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, another video tomorrow with some more notes, and then Friday is going to be a catch-up day. But again, if you're interested tonight, 9 p.m., uh, tune in, uh, watch Mr. Vossler and I make a craft or learn how to craft. So uh, we'll see you guys uh, at some point down the road, hopefully tomorrow, maybe tonight. Who knows? Uh, we'll see you then. Bye.